been thinking a lot lately about two ideas that came up on previous episodes of this podcast from two different guests. And one of them is from Cammie McBride in episode 20 when she talked about information overload and this feeling that we all have so often, especially people trying to learn about herbalism. When do, when do I know enough? And this sort of imposter syndrome that we all, especially women, tend to have like, well, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really know enough yet to be like using or making herbal medicine. And I have all these questions, but what about this? And what about that? And yeah, so we're going to address that more in this in this talk here today. And the second thing I've been thinking about is what Yaya Aaron Rivera Merriman talked about in episode 22, uh, which is it's good to do things that our ancestors would recognize from their time on earth. So cooking and eating whole foods, using herbs and plants as medicine, dancing, handcrafting brooms and other things, you know, just things that they themselves did. Um, not staring at computers all day, not commuting to work all the time, um, you know, things that are just an inevitable part of modern life for a lot of people. And I like, we all do that stuff. So I'm not judging or saying, oh, it's bad if you, if you are looking at your phone all the time, obviously I'm sitting in front of my computer recording this right now, but I just loved that idea. And I feel like so many of us are being pulled toward more earth-based ancient activities and ways of living and so this really ties in to what I'm talking about today, too, with herbal oils and herbal body oiling, just one of the most simple. Okay, so we're going to talk about thinking you don't know enough. This is such a simple form of herbal medicine making. It's perfect for beginners. It's perfect because it's easy to do and because the results are so immediately apparent. Like there's no magical thinking or <laughs> um, like you don't have to suspend belief at all to feel the immediate results of oiling your body with a whole herb infused oil. So, so, oh, I have so much to talk about. I thought I'd share this little story first, though. Um, I recently had shingles, as I've mentioned a bunch of times already. And as a part of that, I started seeing an Ayurvedic practitioner, a wonderful man named Michael. And, you know, he did a full two hour assessment and came up with this framework of, of me, my body, my life, my constitution, all that stuff, made some amazing herbal remedies for me, talked about some lifestyle things I could do. And then in the third or fourth appointment in, he was like, you know, I was like, but the most important thing you can be doing though is, is oiling your body. Do you know about herbal body oiling? Do you do that? And I just like laughed because yes, that has been like my main thing in herbalism for years now. It's, it started out as a personal practice um, after I took Cammie's apprenticeship in 2007 and she taught me how to make herbal body oils. I just, I could not believe, could not believe how effective they were at calming my nervous system, helping me sleep, helping my baby sleep, uh, helping with pain and inflammation. My back was just so sore all the time. I had a big fat baby and I was a tiny skinny little undernourished thing at that time as I've talked about before on this show so and then once I started making and or started selling herbal medicine online five six years after I had been using them for my family um, it was herbal body oils was what I did first St. John's Word oil and you know I I've just created so much um, content and shared so much with my audience over the years on herbal body oiling. And it's been such a major practice for me. So when he said that though, I like, it hit me. I haven't been, I haven't been doing it lately. I haven't been doing it consistently lately. I haven't made it a practice, like an intentional practice just every now and then I'll remember to pour some into my bath at night. And he was absolutely right. As soon as I started making it a consistent intentional practice to oil my body, 
um, I, my nervous system just immediately went into that parasympathetic state that we wanted to be in. I stopped being hyper on edge, on alert all the time and just started living from a more relaxed place. Um, so this is what is so amazing about herbal body oiling to me is that, so there's some alchemy, some magical interaction, although I'm sure there's actually a scientific explanation for it. I just have never come across it. So if you know the answer to this, if you know what's actually happening, like in the deep cellular level, let me know. But there's something about the way that fat molecules from oils interact with the nervous system, with the cells of the nervous system in the body, right beneath the surface of the skin there. They absorb so quickly and make contact that just soothes, soothes, puts out the fire of inflammation or agitation, brings this cooling, beautiful, relaxing energy into the body. It's just the deepest form of medicine that I can think of. And everyone experiences it who uses it. Again, it's so, it's right there. It's so easy to feel the difference and know what's happening. So today I want to, there's just, I feel overwhelmed trying to talk about this because I have so much, so much appreciation for this form of herbalism. And it's so overlooked. Like when we think about using herbal medicine, we think about internal use. We think about tinctures. We think about teas. Um, we so rarely think about the topical use and yet our skin is the largest organ in the body. It's incredibly absorbent and it's an amazing way to take medicine in. So, okay, I'm going to talk today about, um, sleep and again, calming the nervous system about being a highly sensitive person or empath and how incredibly necessary herbal body oiling is about self-knowledge, self-love, Um, about actually like how the nervous system works, what it does in the body and same with the lymphatic and immune systems. We're going to talk about cancer. We're going to talk about um, specific, my favorite herbs that I tend to use for oiling, mugwort, St. John's wort and yarrow. And of course there are so many more you can use. Those are just my faves, my most used. Um, And... Okay, let me read you a list that I compiled years ago of commonly reported effects of consistent oiling. This is based on um, emails and messages that I get from customers, which happens multiple times a week, telling me how the practice of using herbal body oils has changed their lives. Relaxed muscles, better sleep, increased immunity, softer, healthier skin, calmer nerves, better movement and less stiffness in the joints, uh, pain relief, increased warmth and circulation, clearer thinking, feeling more centered, increased energy and stamina, deeper self-knowledge and greater self-love. So I put it out there on Instagram that I was going to be doing this podcast soon and I asked for questions and the most common question I got was, um, which carrier oils do what and how do I know which carrier oil to use and then which herbs do what and how do I know which herbs to use and how do I make the oils and what about fresh versus dry plant infusion and what about mold and how long should I let them sit and so these are all super specific how to make questions which we just don't have time for on a podcast like this and I don't think that audio learning is the best way to learn that either. So, I mean, I will talk about some of those right now, but I was very excited after interviewing Cami to learn after we had stopped recording that she has her online course coming up, Handcrafted Herbal Oils, which will beautifully through video and gorgeous PDFs answer all of those questions plus more. And leading up to the course, which is released sometime later this month at the end of August, um, Kimmy has three free videos coming out that you can watch for free, no obligation (laughs) to sign up for the whole course at the end. And so the first one is about how to make fresh plant infused oils, which is normally what I do. I really love um, fresh plant infused oils. There's just something so 
joyful and immediate about working with the fresh plants that I've just harvested from the wild or from my garden. Um, and so that's the method that I've always used for myself and for my line of herbal oils, mythic medicinals. Um, but they can mold if you're not watching them, if you're not on top of it, if you don't know the proper techniques. So Cammy's video, which comes out today, I'm hoping to release this podcast on Friday, the 10th of August. And that video comes out today and she's specifically looking at making lavender oil in that video. So I don't know about you guys, but my lavender is blooming right now and it's the perfect time to make lavender oil. Um, but you know, you can use so if you're like, I don't have a garden, I don't, I live in the city. There's nothing, I can't go wild crafting. Like what fresh plants can I use? You can use evergreen needles. I'm assuming there are evergreens almost everywhere. Pine needles, fir needles, cedar needles. Um, oh my God. They make the most, the most incredible smelling oils and really work on um, joint inflammation, muscular tension. I mean, evergreen oils, so simple, abundant everywhere, and super medicinal and easy to use. So the next video that Cami has coming out a week from today, I think, is about calendula oil. And Cami has a very specific, very special um dry plant method that she uses for calendula that you have probably not heard of before. It's not just throwing the dried plant in a jar and pouring oil over it like it is with fresh plant material. Um, it's There's an extra special step in there and it's so potent and beautiful. And Cami's calendula oil is definitely the best that I've ever used. So that's really exciting. Um, and these are going to answer so many of the questions that people asked me in in the, you know, ask me anything on Instagram. So let me tell you a little bit too about um, what you would use lavender for at lavender oil. It's cooling, antiseptic, cleansing, relaxing, nourishing, and great for babies and children. Another question that I got asked a lot, the second most common from all those how to make questions were, what about kids and what about pregnancy? Um, so you can absolutely use herbal body oils on kids. Like it's a very gentle form of herbal medicine, but very powerful and potent for the nervous system, for sleep, for calming them down. Um, lavender is absolutely incredible. St. John's wort is great too. That's been the one that I've used the most with my kids. And I'm remembering this story that when my oldest was in second grade years ago, she's going into seventh now. Um, she was the lead in the play, Sir George and the Dragon. It was only one line, but it was spoken in front of the entire school, including most of the parents, all the staff, because it was Harvest Festival at her school. And, you know, she did great. She pulled it off. And that night, she was a wreck. She was a wreck. And she's not usually like that. She's a really steady, even keeled kind of self-contained person. I mean, I was just looking at her like, I haven't seen her like this. She was like a toddler, you know, she was just emotionally like spun out. She was crying and just huffing. And, and then I realized, oh, she did, she did this enormous thing today. And this is just the after effects of, of what her nervous system went through by being the princess in the school play today. So I got out some St. John's wort oil. We used to do this a lot when she was little. We hadn't done it for a while. We laid a towel down and oiled her, just oiled her up from head to toe. And she just whoosh, completely calmed down. She came back to herself. She came back to her center. That's such a great way to think about herbal body oiling. It brings you back into center. And before long, she was asleep. And the next day she was back to herself. Um, so calendula is a wonderful vulnerary, which means wound healer, and it softens and soothes the skin and is really just absolutely amazing at cooling inflammation. Um, you know, while I'm here, I have so many different like pages, both handwritten and on the computer of notes in front of me, but while I'm here, I'll talk about the specifics of the other herbs that I said I would talk about. So St. John's wort 
deeply warming, soothes sore muscles, heals nerve damage, bruises, bumps, and aches, great for back pain and sciatica, relaxes the whole system to support and facilitate any physical healing work. Um, I remember, you know, it was probably Cami who I learned this from. I, I think it was hearing that it was sometimes called the chiropractor's herb or like the you know, the body workers herb because St. John's work can put the body into such a relaxed, receptive state that the person will be much more um, receptive to the body work that they're receiving. So I just, I just love St. John's word oil. I use it every single day. I almost always, even if I'm using another oil, we'll maybe add a little St. John's wort to it if I have it. I love how warming it is. Um, it's just like so oh, I, just penetrating, um, soothing. I'm just going to keep using the same words over and over probably because, <laughs> because these are all the things that body oiling do, all the things that body oiling is. Um, and I wanted to say here too, going back to when do I know enough and then getting into all these specifics of the different herbs and these questions I got about carrier oils. Don't get tripped up and what's the very best herb for me to use and what's the very best carrier oil for me to use. If you have some olive oil on your shelf right now and you have some lavender or pine needles available to you or whatever oil you have or whatever herb you have, just make it, just make it. It's so simple. As time goes on, as you get more comfortable and confident and you have more resources available to you, like Cammie's videos and her course coming up, or, you know, there's so much online now, um, then you can get more into the nuances and the specifics. But really, really, it doesn't really matter. It's not that big of a deal. Like, so yes, St. John's Wort is great for calming the nerves and relaxing the muscles, but so is every single other herb and carrier oil. Um, that that's, that's again, the interaction of the fat with the nervous system and how that just relaxes your whole being. Um, so this also reminds me of, something that Cammie said when we spoke on the phone the other day talking about oils and we're going to do an Instagram live later today. If you're listening to this on Friday the 10th, we're going to be doing Instagram live tonight at 5 p.m. and that video will be available, you know, for another 24 hours after that. So we were trying to figure out the technicalities of how to do a split Instagram live with both our faces because neither of us have done it before. And I was telling Cammy, you know, so many people who ask me questions about this are really caught up in which carrier oil to use and which herb. And we were talking about what she said on the podcast about when do we know enough and when is that point where you just choose to begin? Um, and, you know, she pointed out again, going back to doing things our ancestors would recognize that for most of time, people had one fat available to them, like the one animal in their vicinity that had enough fat in it to use after they had hunted and killed it for food or the one, um, you know, animal that they raised for in their agricultural practices, or maybe that one nut on that one tree that grows in their region. So there weren't shelves full of different kinds of oils and liquefied fats that they could use to make their herbal medicine. They would use what they had and it was enough. And they would use the few herbs around them that, that infused well into oils and that seemed to have some medicinal action when they used them. And that was enough. So again, don't get caught up. Use what you can use what's around you, um, use what calls to you. And of course, do research, find out, is this like, obviously you're not going to put poison oak in an oil. You know, if there's an herb that really shouldn't be used topically, you probably already know about it. If it smells really good and you just want to put it in an oil, like I did that once with lemon verbena. I have no idea if there's any like medicinal action to using lemon verbena topically. I've never read that there is. I looked for the information. There's nothing, but it smells hella good. And I wanted to rub my body in that sense. And it was amazing. I loved it. Um, and then, you know, if you're into a plant, of course you can look it up. You can find out if there's a history of other humans using it topically for their oiling. Um, 
Oh, I should have said this already. If you're interested in watching uh, Cammy's video that came out today, the one on lavender oil or, you know, by the time you hear this, maybe the calendula one is out or the third video, which I'll talk about. The link to it is in the show notes of this podcast. It'll just be like right there in the top. So it's very easy for you to find. Or you can go to my website, mythicmedicine.love slash podcast, and it'll be, you know, right there in the in the description for this podcast that you are listening to right now. Um, Mugwort, revered in traditional Chinese medicine for pulling things to the surface for drawing out problems like moxibustion, tones and regulates the female reproductive system, spiritually used as an aid to enhance dreaming and opens portals of extrasensory perception helps us remember who we are at a fundamental level connecting us to our ancestors the dream time and the wild um also smells amazing amazing uh mugwort is just my maybe my most beloved plant ally and i love using it in herbal body oils the smell the smell is incredible and, um, you know, even though I just said that thing about mugwort pulling things to the surface or drying out problems, that's really used with like the smoke and the steam of mugwort when held close to the body. But I was taught by Cami that when you put mugwort in an oil and put that on the skin, it helps to bring the medicine of whatever other plants might be in that oil deeper into the body. So mugwort is just like this deep penetrative herb, which makes so much sense. I mean, she's just such a deep, deep plant, (laughs) plant spirit in every way. And then I said I would talk about yarrow too. So yarrow soothes sore muscles and bruises, brings energy to areas of stagnation, can be used to heal clean wounds. You don't want to put oil in dirty wounds. Um, It's anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, spiritually used for protection and the strengthening of boundaries and relieves tender breast and nipple tissue. Susan Weed writes, women have noted that consistent use of yarrow oil seems to prevent the growth of new blood vessels that cancerous tumors need for growth. Um, I want to say something real quick about this word antimicrobial. So, you know, that just means antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and any herb that has a scent is antimicrobial because any herb that has a scent contains an essential oil or a volatile oil and volatile oils are by their nature antimicrobial. So herbs that smell super strong like pine needles, mugwort, yarrow, um, they're going to have antimicrobial properties and that means that they are going to have a longer shelf life than herbs that don't have quite a scent like St. John's wort. So if I have St. John's wort oil and I have a mugwort oil, probably the mugwort oil is going to last longer. Um, and combining them, of course, will extend the shelf life of the St. John's wort oil. So here, shelf life, this is something else people asked a lot about. Um, I'd say like the minimum, the minimum an herbal body oil whole plant infused will last is a year, but they can last much longer than that. And it's all about how you store it, store it away from the light, store it in the dark, store it in a cool place. And again, if your oil has a um, strong scent, it's going to last longer because there's more preservative action, more antimicrobial action. And you can also add vitamin E. So I would look that up um, for preserved preservative purposes. For some reason, I've never done that, but I know that's a thing people do. Now I want to talk about essential oils very quickly because a lot of people, when they hear about um, body oiling, immediately think you're talking about essential oils. Man, the MLM companies that have made essential oils a thing in public consciousness have done everyone such a disservice because now people think that they can just go to the store, buy a few essential oils, buy a carrier oil like almond or olive oil or grape oil or whatever and come home and just drop a few drops of essential oil in their carrier oil and then oh they're herbal body oiling but that is a completely different thing and it is not going to work nearly as well for the things that we're talking about because essential oils are just a teeny tiny part of the medicine of the whole plant and if you want the full 
spectrum of medicinal constituents from the plants you're working with, you want to use the whole plants, the whole plant, not just the tiny little essential oil that's been distilled out of it, which is a very wasteful, wasteful process. Um, I mean, I love essential oils for their scent purposes, but I don't use them as medicine. I don't use them as medicine. They're too concentrated. They're too strong. They're too unsustainable. And they're just overused in a really, really sad way that isn't doing anyone any favors, especially because um, people think they're like an herbalist because they're using essential oils and they're missing out on this whole larger actual relationship with the plants that they're using. So again, I'm not against essential oils, but I'm definitely against the way that these modern multi-level marketing companies have have marketed them to be used. They should be um, an asset, you know, used a little thing used to enhance your life as a sensory experience of smelling these wonderful scents, but not as the medicine themselves. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about let's talk about the nervous system. Okay, let me get to my my notes here on the nervous system. So Rosemary Gladstar has written, whatever your philosophy of life, the nervous system is your only means of connecting and interacting with your world. If you treat your nervous system like the sensitive system it is, it will play back the finest music to enrich your being. Keep it tuned and healthy, feed it well, and protect it from overuse and exploitation, and your reward will be a life of exquisite quality. Through even the most stressful events, you will feel centered and empowered. So the nervous system is your body's interface with the rest of the world. It's the master control headquarters for your whole organism. Every muscle, organ, and tissue in your body relies on nerve impulses to communicate and function properly. It's where you and everything outside of you meet. It affects your perception, your sense of well-being, and your reaction to stressors. The sympathetic nervous system is what controls the fight or flight reflex and the parasympathetic nervous system stimulates the rest and digest or feed and breed state. The first is all stress and anxiety and the second is all serenity and love. (laughs) If you are constantly in a state of stress and or your nervous system is depleted, you are in what is called a sympathetic dominant state. And no matter how many green drinks you imbibe or massages you receive or workout sessions you complete, your body's systems and tissues are so compromised in that state of being sympathetic dominant that health and healing are all but impossible. So in today's world with so much sensory stimuli coming at us all the time, most of us are constantly on the verge of being sympathetic dominant or fully in sympathetic dominant state, which is where I was when I got shingles. That's like what shingles is, is your nervous system is freaking out. Your immunity is super low from stress. So now this nerve disease, this virus that's been sleeping dormant in your body since you got chicken pox as a kid, varicella zoster is going to wake up and creep back out and ruin your life with unbelievable pain for a couple weeks. So nourishing the nervous system and gently prodding it toward the parasympathetic state is really a necessity in the modern world. The central nervous system, which is comprised of the brain and the spinal cord, accounts for about a quarter of the body's weight and uses up a significant portion of the body's nutrients and energy to maintain its functioning. So if we're nourishing our nervous system with herbal body oils, we free up a lot of energy that can be directed to other parts of the body in need of healing and regeneration. Like, how amazing is that? It's so simple, right? It's so simple. Um, oily in the body just brings immediate relaxation to the nervous system. You can literally feel it within moments of starting to rub the oil in. Our skin is primed to take in fat-based substances and the nerves instantaneously absorb the medicine of the herbs. So making herbal body oiling a regular practice, um, by doing that, you create a layer of nourishing protection around your body. This Ambient aura is both subtly etheric and physically powerful. It's as if the oil on your skin extends its energy outward to fill up the space around you, ensuring that whatever comes your way is processed first through this layer of healing defense. 
slowing down and transforming what can otherwise be anxious and overwhelming reactions. My sister is a really good example of someone who built up this defensive layer over time using body oils with life-changing results. So she, like me, is a highly sensitive person. Uh, and you might have heard me talk about this on the podcast or on Instagram before. I think a lot of people who are interested in my work are also HSPs. Um, this term can somewhat overlap with or can very much overlap with the term empath with empathic people. Um, but there's some differences too. But either way, people who are super sensitive to the world around them, our nervous systems literally function and process sensory stimuli differently than other people's do. This is about 20% of the population. If you want to learn more about being a highly sensitive person, um, just Google that that phrase. Dr. Elaine Aaron has a wonderful book and she's got a great website. You can take a quiz to see if that's you. You probably already know if it is though. (laughs) Um, So my sister and I are both HSPs, but but we're very different. Like literally since the day she was born, she has tended more toward agitation and anxiety in her sensitivity than I do. She feels everything and is highly attuned to a spiritual reality that I'm not even tuned into at all. I, she's, she's amazing with what she perceives. Um, so she also suffers from that super hypersensitivity in ways that I don't like I'm kind of a mellow HSP. So recently we were talking about her very stressful role as a business owner and manager and how in the past she's tended to have like emotional meltdowns due to tense and aggravating work situations. And I commented on how she's handling things so well and just doing like an amazing job at work lately and suggested maybe oiling every day to help with the stress. And she told me, Amber, I have been oiling every day for like years ever since you got me into this. And that's why I'm doing so well. Like that's, that's why I haven't had a big emotional freak out or meltdown at work and why like the business is doing really well because I'm in my center and I'm able to just process and deal with the stress in a new and more productive way. So I just love, love that I was able to bring that into her life and that you know it's not it's not me i'm not the magic maker there the plants and the fats are the magic makers there and i've had the same experience like lifelong hsp always felt super misunderstood so overwhelmed by life and people didn't understand why i was overwhelmed and they wanted me to be like them and they wanted me to go party on a friday night and i just wanted to stay home and read my books and um becoming a mom Really before I was ready at 25 in a brand new relationship with a volatile person um, with no money, no money. I just, I mean, my nervous system, motherhood, especially in the early years is like nervous system overwhelm all the time anyway. And luckily, luckily when my oldest was a baby is when I took Cammie's class and when I learned about herbal body oiling and it made such a shift in how I went about my daily life and how I felt every day. So, and I really believe that too, that thing I said about how it kind of builds up this like etheric aura around you that helps to filter out the super intense stressors and um, triggering sensory stimuli like before they hit the nervous system in such a hard way that can just completely take you out for a day or give you shingles it just it softens it softens everything that comes at you so let's talk about the lymphatic and immune systems um, the lymphatic system is fundamental to immune function affecting everything from colds to cancer It moves blood and therefore white blood cells throughout the system. And if the skin is dehydrated, then the lymph right underneath it is dehydrated and the body won't be able to fight off infections or allergies as easily. So proper circulation of the lymphatic fluid is necessary, but unlike the circulatory system, the lymphatic system doesn't move of its own accord. It needs touch and massage and movement to keep it flowing. So herbal body oils lend themselves beautifully to making this often overlooked practice of gentle self-massage a regular part of your self-care routine. And I would say here that another question I got asked is like, well, what are the proper techniques and movements I should use when I oil myself? This is another thing, like don't get caught up in, am I doing this right? Just 
touch yourself and move the oil around your body. Um, if you if you really need guidance, you can look up manual lymphatic drainage on YouTube. There's a number of uh, videos showing this specific technique that was developed in the 1930s by a husband and wife team who were noticing that their patients with swollen lymph nodes often had immune problems. But I, I've never done it that way. I just, I just massage myself. I just touch my body. I just move. I just keep the movement flowing in a really intuitive way. And, you know, your lymph aggregates in the armpits, near the breasts, uh, in the neck, uh, and inner thighs. So those are the places that I just, I make sure that I'm touching them and getting some movement in them every time I oil myself. Um, and so breast massage, we're talking about the armpits, the breast, the lymph there. When speaking of lymphatic health and cancer, we just can't overlook the importance of breast massage as a regular part of a woman's preventative self-care routine. Consistent breast and underarm massage keeps the lymph nodes at the armpits healthy and flowing and helps to prevent the stagnation that may contribute to breast cancer. And breast massage feels wonderful. We're so used to our breasts being only touched sexually or functionally, like when feeding a baby, as I'm currently doing. That to receive loving touch on its own, even from ourselves or especially from ourselves, um, is an incredibly healing experience. I love massaging my breasts with herbal body oils. It's just like, oh, hi, you're mine. You don't belong to my partner or my child or to the general male gaze. You belong to me and I love you and I promise to take care of you. It also really helps to relax the corresponding back and shoulder muscles. Um, and of course, it's a great way to get to know the terrain of your mammary glands so that you will know immediately if anything has changed and you can seek medical attention as early as possible if you find a lump. Early detection is everything. And with the familiarity that breast self-massage engenders, you're much more likely to have that that extra early detection piece in place if something does happen. So in October of 2015... I taught a class actually on herbal body oiling um, here in Nevada City at Kit Kadizzy, which Lola talked about in episode 21, sweet little shop here. And afterward, as I was packing up, I was so tired. I, I felt like I got hit by a train and I was like, why? What? What is it? This is so weird. Like, okay, is this, is teaching this tiresome? I, you know, it's one of the first classes I ever taught. And I went home that night and I was laying in bed and I found a hard little lump in my armpit. And I looked in the mirror and it was bright red and it hurt. It was so tender. And so the next day I went to the ER and the intake nurse was like, looked at it and was like, uh, how long has that been there? And I said, since yesterday. And she was like, are you sure? How do you know? And I was like, oh, because I, I herbal body oil myself every single day. So I'm really familiar with the terrain of my body. And I know that that lump wasn't there the day before yesterday. And she was like, oh, okay, well then great. It's not cancer if it's only been there for one day. And, you know, she probably moved me further down the list of who gets seen first in the ER, but it felt really good to be so confident in what I was saying. And, you know, she kind of looked a little surprised, like, why do you know your armpit that well? <laughs> um, but that was why, that was why, is because I, I know my whole body that well from years of this practice. And I think that's a really important aspect of herbal body oiling, maybe something that isn't talked about as much, self-knowledge and self-love. Like how many of us, I'm going to venture to say 100% women in this culture, um, have body issues, don't love every inch of our bodies, would rather even avoid looking at, thinking about, or touching our bodies. And how insane is that? given that this is the only body we will ever have. This body is our vehicle to get through this lifetime, to experience what it means to be alive. This is it. This is it. Uh, it's an ongoing struggle for me to fully accept my body, especially after this second baby was born two years ago. 
but I, I'm, I'm committed. I'm committed to loving it and to looking at it, touching it, knowing it on that intimate of a level. And it really has changed over the years. It really has changed my relationship to my body and my level of self-love, self-acceptance, joy in being embodied. Okay, let's talk a little bit about sleep. Um, This goes back to the nervous system and to the relaxation of the muscles. So the main way that I practice herbal body oiling now, and I'll talk about a couple other techniques, is by putting some oil in the bath at night. Um, A little bit of Epsom salt, hot water, a book, and some oil. Um, And someone asked how much oil I put in the bath at night. I don't measure it out. I just do a little pour into into the water as it's coming out of the faucet when it's almost full. Um, I don't know. You just kind of learn, like just start very little, a little oil goes a long way. A little oil goes a very long way. Keep that in mind as you're beginning your practice. Um, so when I don't oil at night, which happens probably once or twice a week, sometimes, unless I'm really trying to be on it, like I am now after the shingles and everything. But when it's just like, I just want to go to bed. I'm so tired. I'm sure, I'm sure it's okay if I just skip tonight. I have a much harder time falling asleep, a much harder time. Um, It's like when I oil, it's like being wrapped in a cocoon of tranquility and relaxation And I just, I don't lay there feeling every ache and pain in my body with my mind racing. That doesn't happen. Instead, it's like, I don't know, it reminds me of when I was a kid and I could just like sleep peacefully because I didn't have any worries or traumas or any, anything tripping my mind up and any pain in my body. Um, And I hear this all the time from customers, all the time. In fact, I just got an email Um, or was just looking at old testimonials when I used to have the time to write them all out. Just want to say a huge thank you for your magic St. John's wort oil. I used it last night and slept better than I have in months. Um, And going back to use with kids, absolutely. I mean, from, from day one, you can use herbal body oils on kids. Lavender, St. John's wort, um, you know, maybe with brand newborns I wouldn't do much I'd like I wouldn't do mugwort and yarrow. I don't know I'm sure it'd be fine I just I would stick with the very simple gentle ones for the first few months of life but oh man it sure calms them down and then when kids are older when they are like can be super hyper wound up maybe too much sugar too much screen time at grandma's or whatever um, it's a great way to transition into a calmer part of the day and into sleep and if you don't want to fully oil their body for whatever reason, um, and or your own body, or you don't have enough time, go for the soles of the feet. Go for the feet. You know, the feet are connected to every other part of the body. And of course, foot rubs feel amazing. This is the main way that I use oils with my oldest now, who's 12 next week. Um, If she's had a big day or she was on her feet a lot, got a lot of exercise or something, she will ask me for a foot rub that night. And I love doing it. I love still having that time to connect so closely physically with her and that we're using the herbal body oils that we make feels feels really good and really sweet too. So absolutely you can use oils for sleep and uh, and for kids. And as for pregnancy, my God, goodness, please, please be using herbal body oils throughout your pregnancy. Um, for me, St. John's work because of just how specific it is to muscle aches and to nervous system, physical issues like sciatica, um, nerve pain in the lower back, which is such a problem with pregnancy. I, man, I can't imagine getting through my pregnancy without herbal body oiling and labor too. labor too. when I was in labor with Nixie, um, my dear friend, Jen, who was present was rubbing my St. John's word oil on my back and it was amazing. And, you know, by the end it was a water birth and by the end, um, there's just this sheen of oil in the tub, just like when I take a bath and it felt, it felt so good. I mean, I remember how much it shifted my feeling of being in my body through that labor. BTW, if that caught your attention and you'd like to read 
both my home birth stories. They're on my blog, mythicmedicine.love, and they're on the homepage as a search bar. You can just put the word birth in there and those two blogs will show up. Um, yeah, I mean, St. John, not just, just St. John's, where herbal body oiling is like a secret weapon in any mom's toolbox of getting through the days as a mother, calming your kids down and resetting your nervous system after a super stressful day, which almost every day is, especially when they're little. It's just full on, full on, nonstop. You're on, you are on. Um, okay. Let's talk about other specific techniques for how I oil. I talked about the bath, but not everyone likes baths or has a bath. And for much of my adult life as an oiler, I have not had a bathtub. And so what I did then first, I want to say someone asked about like, I don't want to always clean oil out of the bath. Um, if you really have to do that every time, you're probably using way too much. When I put herbal body oil in the bath, none of it is on the floor of the bath when I'm done, but there's usually a slight ring around where the water level was. And I just use a little bit of soap to clean it off. Like you don't need to get down there and scrub. Soap will bring it up for the for the most part, like, of course you can do a bigger tub cleanse as, as often as you clean your tub out, but it's just like no big deal. I pull the drain up when I'm done. And then as soon as the level drops low enough, I just put some brawners all around the ring and it's gone. It's really simple for me. At least that's how it works. Um, when I don't have a tub, what I do is I lay a towel out and have my special oil towel I remove all my clothes. I put my hair up on top of my head and I oil myself. I start, I start on my face. I start at my jaw and like around my ear area. Um, I don't do my whole face. I do put oil on my face every single morning as part of my skincare routine. I just do like a facial mister and then oil. And that's all I do for my facial skin. Um, we have this very erroneous idea that putting oil on our faces will make them oily. And that's just not true. Um, if you already have supremely oily skin, then maybe you want to look into that a little more and do some more research on like which oil might work for your face. But for almost all of us, putting oil on our face is just going to make our skin much healthier and happier. And, um, you know, just really nourish those cells on such a deep level. And when I put oil on my face in the morning, it's, it looks oily for like five, seven minutes and then it's gone. So I'm a huge fan of putting oils on your face. I think we should all be doing it. But, um, so I do that in the morning and when I'm doing my full body oil, jaw, neck, and then I just go down. I just go down the body until I'm at the soles of my feet. I mean, I can do it as quickly as 10 minutes maybe, but usually it takes a little longer. And sometimes I would like light a candle, have some music going, incense burning maybe, just kind of make it a zone out. I don't know, time for myself. But sometimes, this is before I had the second kid. <laughs> this is not what I do anymore. I would put on Netflix or put on a podcast or audiobook or just do something to, um, you know, have some sort of narrative that my mind could follow a story that I was interested in because I found that it kept me there longer. And I would, you know, I would do my head to toe, but then I'd kind of go back to whatever spot was achy and I'd kind of be swaying and moving around. And it's just such a sweet time. Um, again, a little goes a long way. So I, I can see people like using way too much oil doing this and then being like, I never want to do this again because now I'm dripping oil and like, how can I even live my life? Um, the oil absorbs pretty quickly for most of us, depends on skin type, but if you don't use too much, you're not going to be like greasy. You know, I remember my dad, when I was like telling him about how much I love herbal body oily and he was like, I don't like being greasy. I was like, yeah, I don't either. And that's not what this is. Um, but so what you can do then is again, if you're like distracted by something, you're into your show, then you get to sit there for longer maybe than if you're not doing that and the oil can really absorb. So that's another reason I would do that. And then sometimes I'd get up and take a shower 
And I wouldn't like use soap or anything on my skin. It was just like that the water would kind of take the top layer of oil off while the bottom layer was already penetrating in. And then I could get dressed and go about my day or get in bed or whatever. Um, Another thing that I do if I don't want to shower is I just have a robe that's dedicated to oil. It's my oil robe. I just bought a really cheap one recently from Target and that's my oil robe. Um, It will absorb that top layer again. I'll wear it around the house for 20 minutes or something and then I'm ready to put my clothes on without like getting my clothes oily. So have your special oil towel have your special oil clothes or robe and you know you'll have to switch those out every year or two also but it's totally worth it for this practice of nourishing your nerves on such a deep level um yeah again don't get caught up in i don't i don't know how to do this or i don't want to be oily all the time or i don't want my tub to be oily like those are all totally valid concerns if it's not something you've done before but as soon as you start doing it you realize this is not a thing this is not a big deal there are very easy solutions to this okay i'm going to address two more questions that were asked to me um, on instagram one is using heat or sunlight to make your herbal body oils and i just for me it's just no no heat and sunlight both degrade fats Um, You know, there's this thing that people do where they put their St. John's wort oil in the sun because St. John's wort has this solar affinity. It blooms around the solstice. Um, It's a very warming plant. It, you know, it's yellow and like a burst of sunshine when you look at it. So I totally understand the, like the association that we make between St. John's wort and the sun, but I would never put my oils in direct sunlight ever, ever. Um, And you don't need to for the medicine of the St. John's wort to infuse into the oil. It's going to do that on its own very easily, very quickly. Um, And and same with heat. Like heat can just degrade the quality of oils and break down like the the chains of the fatty acids. And I'm just, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. So no, I never use them. I use time. I use time. I, with my fresh plant infused body oils, I let them steep for a moon cycle or about a month. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, we write down the date that we um, started steeping and then about a month later we look and go, oh, time to strain this out and we strain it out. Um, that's what Cami taught me. And, you know, you are going to get more information on how to use and how to make herbal body oils from Cami than from anyone else that I can think of. She's been making herbal body oils since 1988 and had a product line for 20 years. So like this woman knows (laughs) the best techniques for different plants, um, how to do dry plant, how to do fresh plant, which plants are better dried or fresh to use in your oil. Uh, which carrier oils have which energetics and might work best for your skin type or for the plant that you're using. Um, I just, I'm so, I'm so thrilled that Cammie and I reconnected by doing the podcast that she has this amazing course, Handcrafted Herbal Oils, because I am so passionate about herbal body oiling. I've talked about it so many times um, and I get so many questions that I just don't feel like I have the capacity to answer. Like I haven't spent years putting together a course with videos and PDF and, um, and my own like 20 plus years of experience. Cause I don't have that. Cami has that. So it just feel I feel honored and excited to have this resource available to point people towards when they ask me about herbal body oiling. Um, I did my first like Instagram ask me question thing in stories a couple weeks ago. And my answer to almost everything people asked was like herbal body oiling. Oh, I herbal. Yeah. The, the way that I like, um, approach that ailment is herbal body oiling. Oh, St. John's wort oil is what I do for that. (laughs) And I realized, wow, I really need to be talking about this more since I've had the podcast. I haven't really talked about it much Um, since we added other like tinctures and elixirs and stuff into our herbal line, Mythic Medicinals. I kind of stopped talking about oiling, even though it's still a major part of my life. And I think the most overlooked, underutilized form of herbal medicine out there. And that's the um, that's actually the like. 
focus of Cammy's third video. So I talked about the first two, but the third is called the least amount of effort for maximum return home remedy. <laughs> it's just perfect. That's exactly what herbal body oiling is. Least amount of effort because it's so easy to make and maximum return because they're so effective and can enhance your life, the life of your family on a daily basis in such a simple but profound way. So if you're ready to get rid of like the toxic skincare products you're using, um, the stuff on your face, lotions. So lotions are water-based for the most part. They are not hydrating your skin at all. They are dehydrating it to like deeply hydrate the skin. You need fat. You need oil. Um, if you're looking for a way to get your kids into making herbs, if you're looking for a use for the excess herbs in your garden, if you're just looking for like an in into the world of herbal medicine making, it's, herbal body oiling is it. Um, so again, that's in in my in the show notes for this will be the link for Cami's class and launching August tenth, and then the course is available for signups. I don't know sometime later in August. You can go to Cami's site by following that link and figure it all out. Um, I said I was going to answer one more question I got, which is someone asked about when to use oils versus using salves. First of all, I'm sure Cami will talk about this. Like once you make an oil, there's all these other things you can make off of that oil, like body butters and salves and uh, salts for the bath. Um, but basically like a salve is just a, um, harder, <laughs> not liquid, not liquid form of your herbal body oil. Um, so they can be easier to travel with because they're harder and less likely to leak. They can just be easier to put on like a smaller amount of the skin. You know, if I'm going to use an oil, I'm thinking more like larger swaths of skin, although you can certainly use it on just like a little cut or bruise too. But, um, I use salves for like, you know, my, little one scraped both her knees the other day. We used a salve for that. It's it's just easy to put on and she's not going to smear it all around everywhere quite as easily. So so that's my answer to that question. I think I've covered everything. You guys, this is such a big topic and I'm so happy to finally be talking about it. I can't believe how many questions I got and how many people are interested. But again, how caught up people feel and I don't know enough and what's the best this or that or how do I do this or that? Um, just get started. And I hope between the information that I gave you today and um, Cammy's free videos, three free videos, that you will have the confidence you need to get started. Um, I'm going to read a quote from Kiva Rose, the herbalist. I asked a bunch of herbalists a few years ago to like to, to tell me about their oiling practices or tell me why they oil. And Kiva wrote me, herbal oils for the body are one of the simplest yet most profound forms of plant medicine. They provide not only healing for the body, but earth-based ritual and vital self-care. Something as basic as rose petals infused in coconut oil can reduce inflammation and swelling in the skin, help eliminate infection from a wound, and even lessen nerve pain. This sweet pairing is also a fragrant connection to the wild beauty of midsummer and a way of slipping into a more relaxed state through the healing aromatics of the rose. Crafting these remedies, these tangible, touchable prayers, brings us into a timeless state where we can remember that the healing we practice is as old as the human species. Passed on from mother to daughter, grandfather to grandson, medicine woman to apprentice, and a living lineage of love, connectedness, and wholeness. So thank you so much, Cami, for teaching me how to make herbal body oils and completely changing my life as those how many 11 years ago now I remember the last day of that apprenticeship sitting around with everyone and kind of going around and just talking about what we learned the most or what we got out of it and I remember saying herbal body oils is has been my biggest takeaway out of so much that I learned in that class um, it has profoundly changed my life and I am so grateful to know that this form of herbal medicine that I don't ever hear anyone talking about is as effective and strong and potent as it is and I just remember Cammie like looking at me and smiling and saying you got it so thank you Cammie thank you for teaching me this thank you for creating an online course so that this ancient wisdom can be disseminated to more people people who aren't 
able to drive to your classroom in Northern California to learn this from you can now learn it online. And I'm just so grateful for the way that the internet has changed herbal learning. Okay, you guys, go forth, make your herbal oils, oil yourselves, just start, just start. It doesn't have to be perfect at the beginning. You will learn, you will grow, your nervous system will thank you. Thank you for taking these medicine stories in. I hope they inspire you to keep walking the mythic path of your own unfolding self. I love sharing information and will always put any relevant links in the show notes. You can find my blog, Handmade Herbal Medicines, and a lot more at mythicmedicine.love. While you're there, be sure to click the black banner across the top of the page to take my quiz, Which Magical Herb is Your Spirit Plant? It's a fun and lighthearted quiz, but the results are really in-depth and designed to bring you into closer alignment with the medicine that you're in need of. If you love the show, please consider supporting my work at patreon.com slash medicine stories. There's some cool rewards there, like exclusive content, free access to my herbal ebook and online course, and the ability to chat with me. I am a crazy busy and overwhelmed mom and adding another project into my life with this podcast is a questionable move, but I'm also so excited about it and just praying that the Patreon will allow me the financial wiggle room to keep doing it. Another way that you can support if that's not an option is to head over to iTunes and subscribe and review the podcast. That would be super helpful. Thank you. And thank you to Marie Sue for providing the music that I use. That's Marie with two E's, S-I-O-U-X. This is from her song, Wild Eyes, one of my favorites. Uh, Check out Marie Sue. Beautiful music. Thank you, and I look forward to next time. Bye.